Hi, I'm Kyle from The Distilled Man. Up next, I'm gonna share 10 critical tips you need to know to successfully negotiate a pay raise at work. So stick around. Here's the deal. Everybody wants to be paid more money for what they do. Everybody wants to feel valued at work. Yet so many people approach asking for more money the wrong way. Most of the time it's because the discussion is long overdue. They're, they're overworked, they feel underpaid, they feel underappreciated in general. And since their motivation is coming from the wrong place, usually it ends very badly. Either they won't get the raise, or even worse, they get the raise, but their boss and their company resent them for forcing their hands. But it doesn't have to be that way. If done well, asking your employer for money can actually be a very positive experience. You're essentially giving them an opportunity to keep you happy. Just like with personal relationships, if you can learn to communicate your needs in a non-threatening way, you will reap the, re the rewards. So up next, I'm gonna share 10 critical tips you can use to help improve that conversation of asking for more money. Now, these are the same strategies that I used multiple times to get significant raises back when I worked in advertising. Number one, deserve the raise. This is the hardest part, and that's why I wanted to cover it first. You might be kind of laughing to yourself, but there's really no shortcut here. So that means that, you know, not only have you been busting your butt and working a lot, but you've actually been creating value for your company and for your customers, whoever they may be. Deep down, you probably know whether or not that's true. But sometimes when you're working all the time and you feel like you're just slugging, slogging through crap every single day, it's easy to get a distorted view and not be objective about it. Of course I deserve a raise. I'm killing myself every day for this job. Step back and look at it objectively. Are you really due for a bump? Number two, do your research. What are other people making? You can usually find salary surveys in your, for your industry in journals and online. You can also find salary ranges on other job postings. What are other companies offering for comparable positions? That's obviously highly irrelevant because if your, your boss knows that if every single job posting you see for a job like yours is $10,000 more than you're making, then it's not long before you're gonna head for greener pastures. Number three, be specific about your ask. Just going in with the message of, I need more money, somehow makes the request seem more aspirational. It makes it a little easier for your boss to just brush aside. It's way better to ask for a specific amount. Can I, like, can I please get a $10,000 raise? I'd really like to be making X. And that makes the, the ask that much more real and immediate. By providing a specific amount, it's also easier to tie it to a justification. You could say something like, Boss, you know, I've done my research and I found that market comp for people in my position with about five to seven years of experience are making about X. So if there's any way you could get me up to that level, I'd really appreciate it. Number four, be unemotional about your argument. Build a business case. Paint a positive vision for why giving you a raise is gonna be good for the company. You know, allow your boss and the company to, to feel actually good about giving you the money rather than feeling like you pried it from their wallets. Number five, avoid playing the martyr card. You know, the last thing your boss wants to hear is how beaten down you are and how overworked you are and how, you know, you, you really deserve more money because of how hard your life is. When you use the martyr angle, you're basically putting a negative halo around the entire conversation. First of all, it makes you look bad because it, it shows that you can't communicate your needs like an adult. You've basically waited until you've reached the breaking point before you brought this to their attention. It also makes your employer feel bad because it's an implicit indictment of their management abilities. You're basically saying that, you know, maybe they made a mistake uh, or that they're not good at managing your workflow or maybe they, maybe they made a mistake about how much money you should be making. Number six, ask, don't threaten. When you're hanging out with your coworkers or your friends, it's easy to fantasize about threatening to quit to get what you want. Actually using this approach is probably one of the douchiest things you can do. Even if you feel like, even if you know that you have legitimate leverage because you're a critical part of the team, you should really avoid utilizing it in that way. Dude, I'm gonna walk into Johnson's office and bang my fist on the desk and tell him if I don't get a 20% bump, I'm gone. <laughs> yeah, that'll go well. Threatening to quit might work, but it puts a bad taste in your, in your boss's mouth. They'll definitely resent you for it. But more importantly, you don't need to threaten to quit because the threat is implicit. When you ask nicely for what you want, your employer knows in the back of their heads that they can only let you down so many more times before you decide to reconsider your options. Number seven, anticipate objections. 
Even if your boss agrees wholeheartedly that you deserve a raise, they're still going to challenge you a little bit on the reasons why, because they're going to have to justify it to other people in the company anyway. Also, I mean, if a conversation was going to cost you $10,000, you'd probably milk it a little bit too. Be prepared for the counter arguments your boss is going to throw your way. Most likely, you'll be able to identify them ahead of time, and you'll be able to prepare a you know, a rebuttal for each one, and that way you can diffuse each point as it comes up in the actual conversation. Number eight, be prepared to get creative about compensation. Maybe your company won't give you a $10,000 raise, but maybe they'll let you give you every Friday off, or they'll give you some extra vacation, or maybe they'll let you telecommute a couple days a week, or give you a car allowance. Or, you know, I even had a company offer me travel vouchers when I, back when I worked in, uh, in advertising. I think there's really no limit in terms of creative ways to be compensated. Thinking like this can be a great solution, especially if the only reason they can't give you a monetary bump is because they don't have the cash. Or if you must have cold hard cash, another creative approach is to uh, propose something that's performance based, based on either your performance or your team's performance. And that way, if you can show that the company is actually getting more money as a result of this, then they'll have the money to be able to pay you the more money that you want. Number nine, choose the right time. As with anything in life, timing plays a huge factor here. So on a macro level, you wanna to try to find a time when your boss and your company are in the right frame of mind. Think about major events in the company lately. Uh, have you had some major wins? How are things going financially for the company? Obviously, it's gonna be a hard sell if the company has just you know, experienced losses or just laid off staff. On the other hand, if the company's doing well, it could be a very good time. Or from an individual perspective, has there been a time when you've uh, really shown your value lately? You know, if you've just lost money for the company by some, you know, dumb mistake that you made, hey, guess what? You're probably not going to get that raise. But on the other hand, if you've really been kicking ass lately, maybe now is a good time to ask for more money. Timing is also important on a smaller, more mundane level. Choosing the right time of day and blocking out a time slot is critical. Ideally, you want to choose a time when you and your boss aren't going to be interrupted. And usually that's probably going to be early in the morning or late in the afternoon or evening because that's going to give you time to state your case and also allow the conversation to sort of percolate naturally, hopefully for the positive. Finally, number 10, plan out the conversation and practice. Outline your plan of attack, including how you'll start the conversation and what your specific ask will be. The more you practice, the smoother and more confident you'll be. Now, the last thing you want to do is go in there sort of without preparation and just say, hey, boss, I really think I need more money because, uh, uh, and you look at your notebook, awkward silence. And, you know, the last thing you want it to seem like is that it's just something that occurred to you on your, in your drive into work or in the shower this morning. The more prepared you are, the more genuine it's going to come across that you really believe that it should be that way. Practice not only what you're going to say to your boss, but practice how you're going to listen to your boss's rebuttals and counter arguments. And also practice how you're going to calmly take a breath and be confident and non-threatening in your response. You may even want to role play with a friend and ask them to sort of throw uh, real life objections at you. Because the more that you can sort of do this on, uh, sort of think on your feet during this conversation, the better. Also, you don't want to memorize the specific wording exactly. You want to just keep these bullet points in your head as just general ammunition. Because once you get hung up on memorizing, you can easily get thrown off while you're actually in the conversation. So I would never say that asking for a raise is easy, but if you follow the tips I just gave you, it will drastically improve your chances of getting a yes while still preserving the relationship with your boss. All right, well, I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions or feedback, please leave a note in the comments. I definitely always love hearing from you. And if you like this video, please hit like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. All right, well, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.